We're going to go ahead and get started. Good morning, everybody. We're going to go ahead and get started. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Ellen Burke, and I'm a member of Temple Road of Shalom, and um, I'm really honored to lead this funeral remembering Paul this morning. Personally, I didn't know Paul, but we'll be hearing from several people who did. <coughs> I will tell you that he was born September 1st, 1967, the middle son of Maureen and Dick. Now, uh, you can guess who gave me this next information. Uh, he was a self-taught classical pianist who graduated from the School of Music from the University of Miami. He was also a self-taught software engineer and an inventor of numerous applications. Paul was married to Beverly and they have two precious children, Aaliyah and Richard. So this morning, we will begin with El Mala Rakamim, a prayer that expresses our faith in the immortality of the soul. The prayer is in the inside of this white folder that you have, <coughs> and we can read together. Compassionate God, eternal spirit of the universe, grant perfect rest in your sheltering presence to Paul Applebaum, who has entered eternity. O oh God of mercy, let him find refuge in your eternal presence and let his soul be bound up in the bond of everlasting life. God is his inheritance. May he rest in peace and may we all say amen. As in the world around us, so too in human life, darkness is followed by light and sorrow by comfort. Life and death are twins. Grief and hope walk hand in hand. Although we cannot know what lies beyond the body's death, let us put our trust in the undying spirit who calls us into life and who abides to all eternity. We are going to now hear from some of Paul's family and I will begin by calling up his dad. Thank you, Ellen. His family, uh, which are present today, include his wife Beverly, their two children, Richard and Aaliyah, his two brothers, Kevin, and David, his nephew, Keith, his mother, Maureen, and of course me. We all appreciate your being here. Uh, I will just, from the, off the top of my head, make a few comments and then invite anybody else that may want to step up and, and have a few words. Our granddaughter, my granddaughter, Aaliyah, used the word unique to describe her, her father. Aaliyah was very astute. He was truly unique. Uh, it was a pleasure to be with and know and raise someone who is unique. It was also an adventure. Uh, when Paul was born in 1967, uh, and he, he was born in Charleston, South Carolina. One week later, the family moved to Maryland. So he had his first plane ride at age one week. I began my curriculum at law school a week after that. His younger brother David 
was born two weeks before I finished. So my adventure through law school was, at the very least, somewhat hectic. But Paul was a particular adventure because he was very strong. His upper body strength was, was quite remarkable. And he could climb before he could walk. He was an escape artist. He would, we put him in his crib. It's a normal sized crib. And he could move that crib around by bouncing on the, the mattress. And he would bounce the crib from one side of the room to the other and be able to unlock the, the latch that we put at the top of the door so he would stay in his room. Did that on one occasion. Uh, we could hear him bouncing, but we heard that all the time. But he went, uh, he unlatched the door and he crawled. He wasn't walking. He crawled down the stairs and knocked on the neighbor's door at 2 o'clock in the morning. When we moved to California, when he was two years old, or close to two and a half, uh, he got out again. This time he took his little pedal car, you've seen these little pedal cars, and he took it onto State College Boulevard, which is a major thoroughfare in the city of Anaheim, California. He was heading for Angels Stadium. I guess he was going to go watch a ball game. But a woman who was <coughs> in the next lane got him off of State College Boulevard, Boulevard and somehow brought him home. But it was an adventure, but a wonderful adventure. Always surprising us, always uh, giving us great pride and satisfaction in his accomplishments. You heard about the music. He came home one day and he was playing classical music, just like that. I had no clue. He went to college and studied music and graduated with a degree in music theory and performance. And his performance was in the piano, organ, and harpsichord. He did, did a lot of things throughout his life, but certainly his greatest achievement was his marriage and his children, Richard and Aaliyah. Precious children. I'm going to ask Aaliyah to come up. She has a few words to say. I, I, have, your, I have your remarks right here, Aaliyah. She was going to bring her oboe and play for her father one last concert, but we got a little busy and the, uh, well, this is Richard. Here's yours. And uh, I'm going to stand right next to you because Here's I have to read Richard. Okay. Um, uh, <laughs> I'm scared because I'm up here. Uh, he is the best dad ever. When I felt sad, he was always there to make me smile. I will miss him for eternity, but he is now in a better place with no pain. I love you forever, Aaliyah. Thank you, Aaliyah. Sit down next to your mom. Uh, Richard asked me to uh, deliver his remarks. He writes, Dear Daddy, from Richard, love you. You are the best dad in the whole entire world because you took care of me very well. And you loved Aaliyah and me and you were the kindest man in the world. Love you more than anything, Richard. These, your speech, Aaliyah, and, and Richard, your, your note, they belong to me now. I'm taking it back. <laughs> so, I know, uh, 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 Ellen is going to tell you about a little reception we're going to have at, at their home. And I'd be happy to regale 
all of you with stories uh, too numerous to recite now, but I'm going to invite anybody else who has anything they would like to say to come on, come on up now. Anybody? Okay, younger brother David. See if anybody else has anything to say. After sure that. thing. Okay. Well, you said the word unique, and uh, I appreciate you offering that because that's a word that actually it, it summarizes my relationship with your father. Unique. And I'll tell you, your father and I were able to talk about any topic, and we were always talking on the same level. And it could have been something silly and funny, or it could be something very deep and, and intense. And we were always able to communicate at that same level, which made it very unique. But so those times in our life when you have those uncontrollable laughs, uh, which you're not sure how they generate or where they came from, your father and I had more of those than and anyone else I've ever laughed that hard with. Um, we set the woods on fire when we were little. Um, and when we were confronted by your grandfather about setting the woods on fire, your father says, I lit the small ones, but David lit the big ones. <laughs> your father was unique. I heard that word a little while ago. Your father taught me how to water ski. But what was unique, it was off of a car in a canal <laughs> off the Florida Turnpike. We got stopped by the police when we were water skiing off of a car handle in a canal off the Florida Turnpike. We got thrown in the back of a police car together, and the police officer said, you're in big trouble. You can't do this. What was your father's reaction to that police officer? He said, my daddy's a lawyer, and he said this was perfectly okay. <laughs> so, while I have laughed hysterically with your dad and your husband, um, he also terrified me and sometimes when he, when he talked. And there are stories after stories um, uh, about our ability to talk and communicate, and in, in tough times, no one better to talk to. And in times of rejoice, no, no one better to talk to. And I, I know he's your hero, but he's mine too. At this time, I'd like to invite anyone else who might want to speak. I have to excuse me if I cry. Um, my name is Nina, and uh, Aaliyah and my granddaughter Ava are best friends. We've known each other since <laughs> grade school. I'm, I'm talking about if they're older already, but um, <laughs> it's in fourth grade, third, fourth grade. And uh, even though they live here in Waco, um, they're still like they're sisters. We, they, Aaliyah comes over to our house and vice versa. And during these past years, um, to know this family and has been a blessing. And it, uh, it's rare to find a person that you can bond so quickly with and the love of life that he has and the strength. And that's one thing that these, that Paul and Beverly had in common was the perseverance to push through no matter what. Um, Paul, even though he had his, his sickness, he still went and traded his car for a motorcycle. And, <laughs> and um, he loved that motorcycle, guiding the motorcycle because it took his ailment away. And you could see him describing his ride to me um, that he said he was free, you know, um, that everything that his 
shakiness would just dissipate and he just loved that feeling and uh his love for cars to trucks i work for ford and um he was all excited about what's the newest thing you know and what's the newest truck and when are you gonna have it let's go to the showroom and can i test drive it and, um and there's so many incidents that uh that have marked ava in my lives um let me see i think it was last christmas uh we met at uh downtown Waco uh, by the silos and uh, we went and uh, had uh, lunch and uh, but before that he was excited to give a present to to Ava and it was a hoverboard and because Richard and Aaliyah have one and uh, he wanted Ava to have one so they could all ride together and he was so excited. I mean, he was, Beverly says, no, let's do it after lunch. And it's like, no, no, I want to do it now. And, you know, he was just so excited. And it's just the love that he, that he had for my granddaughter. You know, it was just many times, like Beverly says, like these girls are like sisters and Aaliyah's like my daughter. And it's just, it's just <laughs> him coming over to the house. And uh, we had my daughter's little, uh, dog and um, I, 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 Paul had a thing for animals and the kids and it would call him like the wolf you know and <laughs> he would howl or do something that it would really tame the animal you know it was just uh, it, and uh, it, it was just amazing I mean he would just go down to the dog and just like he says, yeah, you have to be one with the dog. I know I could speak his language, you know. So, and uh, just so many stories and moments that I will always treasure. Uh, and uh, I mean, he's he's a man I will always look up to. And like I said, his tenacity and uh, will always be in my heart. Thank you. Um, so we lost, uh, our dog for a bit. She ran out the door and, uh, my, and at nighttime, my dad said that if he howls out loud and Bella comes back, it would work. And he went outside and he howled and... <laughs> And then after a while, my dog came running back <laughs> and and uh, it worked. <laughs> I believed him. Thank you. Which is cool. <laughs> I remember Paul and I when uh, when I met him. Uh, I was working at the restaurant and uh, he asked me if if I know somebody uh, who cleans the house. <laughs> and then uh, I tell him I say yeah I know somebody. And then uh, I call my friend and she say no I cannot do it because I have to go you know somewhere. So I feel like uh, guilty, you know. I say, okay, I'm gonna go and do, you know, I'm gonna clean your house. And then uh, the third day, he's like, you wanna marry me? <laughs> 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 and I was like, yeah. <laughs> I say, I'm ready to have a family, I'm ready to have a husband. And, uh, and since the day we have like 15 days, uh, 15 years, 15 years married now. So even if we don't know each other uh, three days, so uh, I'm very strong woman, and, and he's uh, he support me. Uh, I am the person who I am now because he helped me to a lot. I had the best husband. I, I don't think I'm gonna have another person like him again. Like he, he was the best daddy, the best husband, and everybody in here. They love him so much, and uh, 
I know he will be in a better place. I know he will be watching us. And uh, he was the purest person and honest person. So that's all I can say. You know. My name is Charles, and uh, although I didn't get to know Paul for a very long period of time, unique is a perfect word because he's one of the most unique people I've ever met, had conversation with, super nice person. You'd never know what Paul was going to say or do, and again, it made it so unique about him. Uh, but. In a short period of time, I feel like I've known Paul most of my life, and I've only known him for a little over a year, see. But such a great person. Um, he was just always so easy to talk to. And again, I kind of feel like, like you, we could talk about anything, you know. And Beverly, she told me, she says, you know, she says, that's unusual, she says, because Paul doesn't really, he, he's not a really a guy that, uh, you know, uh, easy to talk to, and he, he, he really doesn't uh, take too much to people that he doesn't know. She says uh, it was kind of unusual, but we talked a couple of times, and it's just, we, we just hit it off, you know. Truly amazing person. I am beginning I've gained a lot by meeting him. He put a lot of things in my head that wouldn't be there otherwise. I love that man. Yeah. Yeah. I love that man. Thank you. Also, <clears throat> on the back of your folder, you'll find the 23rd Psalm. <clears throat> there are many different versions of this psalm, but um, let's read this one together. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in straight paths for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. <clears throat> Birth is a beginning, and death a destination, and life is a journey from childhood to maturity and youth to age from innocence to awareness and ignorance to knowing, from foolishness to discretion and then perhaps to wisdom, from weakness to strength or strength to weakness and often back again, from health to sickness and back we pray to health again, from offense to forgiveness, from loneliness to love, from joy to gratitude, from pain to compassion, and grief to understanding, from fear to faith, from defeat to defeat to defeat, until looking backward or ahead, we see that victory lies not at some high place along the way, but in having made the journey stage by stage, a sacred pilgrimage. Birth 
is a beginning and death a destination and life is a journey a sacred pilgrimage to life everlasting so now we come to the part of the service where we will recite a prayer called the mourners Kaddish Kaddish means sanctification in Aramaic and it's related to the Hebrew word Kadosh which means holy what's interesting is this prayer never mentions death or dying but instead proclaims the greatness of God the transliteration of the mourners Kaddish can be found in this brochure also if you will all join in in reading the transliteration when you leave you can say you actually said a prayer in Hebrew Yiskada v'yiskada shemei rabah b'alma divra kirite v'yam lik makute v'kaye kon uv'yome kon uv'kaye d'kol beit Yisrael v'agala uv'izman kari v'imru amen yehe shemei rabah mevarak le'alam olome almaya yisbarak v'yistabak v'yit par v'yit roman v'yit nase Viet Hadar, Viet Hale, Viet Halal, Shemei, Dukudasha, Briku, Leila, Min Kol, Birkata, Vishirata, Tushbikata, Venekamata, Da Amiran, Vi Alma, Vi Imru, Amen. Yehe Shlama Rabba, Min Shemaya, Vi Kayim, Aleinu, Vi Akol, Yisrael, Vi Imru, Amen. O Se Shalom, Vim Romav. Who Yaase Shalom, Alenu via Kol Yisrael, the Imru, Amen. May the source of peace send peace to all who mourn and comfort to all who are bereaved. Amen. So this is the end of the funeral service, and now all the mourners, all of you, are invited to come forward to help fill the grave. Symbolically, this gives us, the mourners, closure. It is custom for everyone to take the shovel, held, pointing down instead of up, and that is to show that the use of this shovel is different from all other uses. It also shows our reluctance to say goodbye. So when you're finished, you put the shovel back in the ground rather than handing it to the next person. And this is to avoid passing along your grief to others. And most importantly, this tradition is known as a mitzvah, an act of true loving kindness. It shows our continuing concern for the deceased and as we make sure that their final journey is complete. You are all welcome to perform the mitzvah of burial. So, why don't y'all come up first? <coughs> and they're gonna, is this okay? They can So um, I think all of you all heard um, Dick say that there would be a little reception at um, the Applebaum's house. And so um, Aaliyah has the address of the house and the phone number in case um, somebody gets lost. And she, if anybody wants um, the address, um, just pass that little note out. 